You're listening to Deja. 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 Good afternoon, it's the Open Match Show. I've got a special guest in the building, Matt Robinson, hailing out of Lewisham. Welcome to the show, Matt. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to the Deja Vu Studios. Good to be here. Thank you. I've got my co-host, Maria, Hello. and Dan the Man. What's good? What's good? So, Matt, talk to me. MMA fighting. Yeah. How's it been going for you? It's a roller coaster. to be fair. It's good. I love fighting, so even when I have bad days, yeah. the end of it's still good, man. When did you it. start fighting? I started fighting professionally about... Five years ago, but started training probably about six, seven years ago. Okay. And what, what did you start from a young age? When was your... Um, yeah, when I say I've been training for like seven years, that's like seriously. But when I first started getting into it, when I like we used to go with my brother, it's probably yep. about 10 years ago from I was about 15. I've been yeah. doing this. Yeah. Elite fighting system, yeah? Hey. Was it elite? Elite, yeah. Back in the elite days when that used to be in the Haygate Estate, which ain't even there no more. So that just shows the Haygate how Estate. long ago <laughs> I've been doing this. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me about your record, your current record, professional record. Professional record is uh, five wins and five losses. Nice. Who was your last fight against? My last fight was against Nathan Jones. It was for the Warrior Fight Series World Weight Championship. And how did that go? I lost that fight, unfortunately. Okay. Did you feel that it was down to your training? Was there something that you was missing? It definitely wasn't down to the training. I've never felt better for a fight than that fight. Like, this one, this loss here will hurt me the most out of all of them because I felt good training. Yeah. I fought for a lot of things before, earlier in the year, like injuries, got over them, got back to good health. Yeah. Had good sparring, good training. Even in the back, in the change room, I felt good. Yeah. I felt so good for the fight come out, and it doesn't always go your way on the night. You can make a small mistake in MMA. So, what do you think it was then? Because like, I know in training, nine times <coughs> out of ten, you escaped that. Yeah. So um, what, do you, what do you think it is? It's your mindset. Like they say, 90% of this game is mind, 10% mm -hmm. is physical, and they're, they're not wrong because my mind was in a good place. Mm -hmm. Until I walked in the cage, everything was good, until we touched gloves, and all of a sudden I must have thought he murdered my mum, so I just wanted to kill him straight away. And usually okay. I'm not, I play a game calmer than that, but I, I ran straight at him and wanted to take him out, which it worked in his favour because it put him mm -hmm. in a position where he had to do something quickly to get me down and... and it allowed me to make a small mistake that I wouldn't have usually made in training or other fights where I've been calmer yeah. and more like technical about fights. Like the stand up was technical, the floor was everything's technical. Yeah. But when you're that fresh, you go to the floor that early, you make one little mistake and, and you can get caught. So, what, what do you think? Do you reckon it was a, a bad day in the office for Matt or was it an inform Nathan? It was more of a bad day in the office for Matt. Um, I could say Nathan was in form because he's been on form. He's been on a little. He's been on quite a decent winning streak. But definitely. from what I saw of him, I know on my good day I can definitely beat him. Anybody can beat anybody in their, their good yeah, days. Of course. But I feel like I've fought fought more experienced opponents. I've had some tougher fights, and I would have liked, even if I lost the fight, for it to have been an all-out war. I'm just not happy with the way I lost the fight. And uh, yeah. That's no disrespect to Nathan because I would have done the same thing. So when you say like you touched gloves with him and then it was like, let's go to <laughs> war. Why, like why did you? Why did it become? Was it like a personal duel from then? Was there something he said? Something that no. And the funny thing is, I've like when I took this fight, I've never. I know a lot of people that know Nathan, and um, I don't know him myself, mm. but he's known as somebody that talks a lot. And upsets a lot of people, gets under their skin. Okay. So Pete, as soon as I took the fight, people told me, expect the shit talk, expect the yeah. trash. So, my bad, but expect all, that, all of yeah. that stuff to come your way. And uh, it never did. To be fair, he was respectful from beginning to the way in to the end. He was respectful to me. So, there was no reason for me to go like that. But you know, when you're locked in a cage with somebody that's trying to take you out, it's either you or them first. And sometimes yeah. your, your head just acts so have differently. So, have you fought against the trash talkers before? I have. Did it make you feel, make you want to train harder? improve strength knock them out did you think <laughs> like, I don't really let it bother me in my training you know you know you've got a lot of uh, Facebook warriors out there <laughs> social media warriors <laughs> when they got a fight coming up they feel like all their training is done on a keyboard like mine's in the gym so I don't really watch Facebook and them things there too much when people yeah. are talking rubbish I just hear it from like someone said oh he said this about you and I'm like I'm not worried I'm confident in my own skills I know what's going to go down when we get in there yeah. um, only one guy gave me some trash talk on the day of the fight and I just didn't feel no way. I know at the end Who's of the that? day, yeah, that was that? Uh, Let's Jordan get that Miller. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah. That was yeah, Jordan yeah, yeah. Miller. He gave Jordan me Miller? Some, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's a cool guy, though. I spoke to him afterwards. He was all cool. But on the day of the fight, he was just like kind of talking like, Matt's got no chance. I'm going to destroy matter. him. 
It doesn't Definitely. matter what he does, what he comes with and all that stuff. But um, I, I could understand that that's it's part of the show, man. You've got to put a show on, so of course. it's all cool. Okay, so you lost to Nathan Jones on your last fight. So do you, how does it work now? You go back into training, you want to get a rematch with him. What's the next step for Matt Robinson? Well, usually when I train for a big fight like that, like a title fight, yeah. you, you train so hard for like I trained for nine, ten weeks for that fight. And for it to end... I even planned a trip afterwards, a relaxing holiday to Thailand. Okay. All right. So I've already planned too far ahead. And that's probably one of my mistakes because I like to think that after a fight, there ain't, there ain't no beyond the fight. That's it. Yeah. Life ends at that fight. You could, you could get batted up in there to a point where you, don't, you can't even move after that fight. So I probably plan too far ahead. Yeah. But, but usually, confidence is a good thing. It's good. It is good. But yeah. Maybe usually booking a holiday was a bit too confident. I know. And that's the day <laughs> after as well, you know. Day it's after. It's the deserved, morning man. after. It's deserved. You train but your ass off in the gym. You train your ass off and you like yeah. to have a break afterwards. And that's what I usually do. But this particular loss hurt me. So luckily I went to the right place where if I wanted to go straight back into training, I could. And I did. I went to Thailand and instead of being on a relaxing holiday, I went straight into one of the best gyms out there. In Thailand? In Thailand, okay. yeah. I was training again two days after the fight. I had no injury, so I thought there's no excuse now. Phenomenal. How was that in Outside. Thailand? What was, it, what was it like? Different cultural experience for you? Was it? Have you been there before? Or? I've been there before, but I haven't trained at that gym that I trained at. Yeah. And that gym was just... It's like the best gym experience. What was you training at there? Muay Thai or I everything? trained Muay Thai out there. Yeah. It was an MMA gym, but I, I practiced Muay Thai out there. Yeah. Nice. That's where it comes from. That's what you can't really learn from any for the best. But so... To answer your question, I'm saying, like, usually I will take a break, but there's no break now. I just went straight back into training, and I've stepped in last minute, and I've booked myself a fight for next weekend. I'm fighting again. Oh, so you're fighting next weekend? Yeah, 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 fighting next weekend. And where is this fight? This fight is in Colchester. Colchester, Colchester. okay. So I'll, have, I'll have to come down and see that. That, that fight that you lost was the most hurtful, but within your, yeah, you win some, you lose some, um, and there was a streak where you lost three in a row, and how did how that make you feel? The three in a row streak, I remember that, and uh, that was hard, but I had some good fights within that, but um, that was at a time where I injured my knee pretty badly, right. and um, I took some fights when I shouldn't have. I needed surgery, I had the surgery, and I came back too soon, and I, I understood and I learned from each of those losses and came back. They didn't really hurt as much as this fight did, because... In the back of my mind, I knew I didn't train as hard for those fights as I did for this one, and because of the injuries that I had. But um, that's just how it goes, man. Sometimes you you have to learn from your losses and, and come back stronger. So, what would you say to obviously might be some like, young people out there or something that have lost a couple of fights and they're thinking I can't do this anymore? Obviously, you've come back from three fights and then you won. So, what would you say to them if they were feeling like that? You you shouldn't give up. And you should, it's the same in that respect as in a fight. If you get in a bad position in a fight, you're getting punched up in a fight. There's so many examples out there. You can watch fights where people are losing badly and they come back and win. And there's a few fighters out there, like Nathan Jones, my last opponent. He also went on a three-fight losing streak, and now he's on a five-fight winning streak. So you can turn it around for the better. Also, um, there's, there's a lot of fighters out there that lost their first few fights. Um, I think it's... Is it Vito yeah. Belfort? There's quite a few UFC fighters that lost their first few fights, and then they go on a big winning streak. And... You, when you're in positions where you've lost in those fights, you'll remember, I don't want to be here, I'm going to win, and I'm going to make it, it better. Hungry to Definitely. Win. Like, MMA is different to boxing. That's what I want to tell the people out there. Like, it's, it's not about your record exactly of how many wins you've had. It's who you fought and how your fights have gone yeah. in MMA. And that's what I like about MMA. There's, like, a lot of different ways to win or lose. There's no one with a perfect record out there that's been fighting for long. Yeah. So when you was in school and stuff, was you, like, the, the bully of the school? How, did that, how, how was that? Was it... And, or, or was you getting bullied or, or was you just a normal like when I was at school I was the guy I want to break up fights I want to stop things yeah. from happening I'm the I'm the, I'm the equaliser you know type. in school you got your crews right you got the football crew yeah you got the crew with the girls right you got okay. the, the, the ladies guys yeah you got the nerds yeah and you got like the weird awkward fat kid in between okay <laughs> was that yeah, you that was me that oh, was right. me yeah, yeah. Okay. I floated from different groups <laughs> I, went for, I was fat in school you know I was a fat kid so he ain't the fat kid no more yeah no, not no more I was a fat kid <laughs> up until about that. he ain't no fat kid <laughs> <laughs> yeah. up until about I'd say age 13 I was a fat kid yeah and then um, I found my feet and it was while I was in school that my brother started doing MMA that I got involved in MMA okay so um, I went to training while I was still in school yeah and I saw some bigger guys like and saw how they trained and got beat up in the gym and came back and then it was all friends afterwards. Yeah. And it gave me a different mentality in school. I was like, you, like, I've seen a lot worse than what's going on here. People dragging up each other and yeah. everyone, people being bullies and they're not really all that. So, yeah, it was all right, man. Like, I was never a bully in school. It was more of a, 
a lover than a fighter. That's that's always nice to know. That's yeah. always nice to know. So you mentioned UFC. Um, obviously, that's like the ultimate fighting championship. Yeah. Um, I heard recently you was out there watching a fight. Oh, yeah. I was in Vegas in January watching um, Anderson Silva and Nick Diaz fight. And that was... Uh, wow. How was that? That must that have been... That was wicked, man. Anderson Silva's been my favourite fighter since, since I started with? watching fighter. Who did you go with? I went by myself. <laughs> no, nah, nah, I, nah, I respect that. Now, nah, Dan, you ain't got that in you, have no, you? No, hundred percent not. Nah, I'm, I'm a guy I can I go, go travel by shop. myself. I yeah, yeah, yeah Maria just went to the shop together. <laughs> 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 now, I, I would do something like that. How was it when you was in the arena? What was the atmosphere like? Because obviously, Man. you're you're a fighter. You fought at yeah. um, shows in London and all over England. So, so how was it at the MGM Grand? The MGM Grand was wicked. It was the best, the best venue I've seen. It's not the biggest venue I've seen. I've yeah. been, I was surprised that it wasn't as big. And it's good like that because even at the back, if you have the worst seats, you still got a good view of everything. The, okay. the atmosphere is like, it's intense in MGM, man. It's like, that's the best place you can fight. So it just gives you a little sight and gold, something to head for. You want to fight there one day. That's what everyone wants to fight. Yeah. That's nice. And so you room for to win? Anderson, man, that's my boy. He's, I still <laughs> think he's the best there's ever been and. To be able to watch him there was, yeah, that was wicked. You've seen him live when he started off though, right? And you know what? At yeah, Cambridge. yeah, that's yeah. right. And that's, that's why I love Anderson so much more because I feel like he's English, right? We know he's Brazilian, yeah, yeah. but he's ground roots. He fought in Cage Rage a lot and I watched him when nobody even cared. Nobody wanted, mm-hmm. to, to, nobody wanted him to win. He was always fighting an English favourite. He was always not the underdog, but everybody was cheering for the other guy. And uh, I used to love watching Anderson, man. His style has just been wicked. And to watch him go from these shows... Yep. Cage Rage and, and, and so on to go to the UFC yeah, and other people that I know that have fought on Cage Rage and the shows that I fought on and go to the UFC it just shows you that it's possible do you know what I mean hard work can be done yeah and that's the main thing that's, that's if you work hard and train hard you yeah. can get the opportunities definitely another one Paul Daly Paul Daly I still wish he was fighting in the UFC uh. man <laughs> now I remember seeing Paul Daly when we went to a show like Wembley Conference Centre. Wembley Conference Centre. Good memory. You must have been on the blueberries. Um, and I'm seeing this guy, and I'm saying to Dan, who's, who's this guy? Who's this yeah. guy? And he was just, he said he's, um, what's his nickname? Semtex. Semtex, there you go, because yeah, he's explosive. So definitely. it made sense to me. Fantastic fighter. He's someone I look up to, definitely. And do you know what? I, why I look up to him is like, he's a fighter. Like, he's not just a, I'm going to train for like two months, take a fight, take yeah. a break. Like a lot of people do now, which... I have been doing before, and that's why now I want to fight more regularly. If he isn't fighting MMA, he'll fight K1. K-1. He'll yeah. fight in the street, he'll fight in the bar, yeah. he'll fight anywhere. Like, and he just keeps active, and yeah, that's definitely someone to look so up to. So after your loss, that's why you was happy to jump on to another fight two weeks later? Definitely. Yeah, because okay. you know what? I've always said that. I've always said that after like, a fight, I feel so fit and good. I feel like I need to get another one in. And there's yeah. always been an injury or something that's caused me not to do it and to leave it a little a little while longer. So I'm really looking forward to the fight next week, man, just yeah. to just to keep it rolling. What do you know about him? The fighter next yeah. week? Don't know a lot about I'm him at all. Much. I haven't had time to know nothing about him. I know that he had a fight and his fighter pulled out last minute and that's happened to me. So mm. I'm glad to be able to step in and give him a fight because I've been in that position as well where someone pulls out and mm. it's just happy to have a fight. So I'm glad that he's there and needs the fight. So Clearly the experience is going in your favour, right? Yeah. And the, the funny thing with this fight is that um, he's he's had a f- only a few fights. I don't know how many, but um, he's won them. Yeah. And um, I've had a lot more fights than him. But that doesn't, like, he's going to be more hungry. Do you know what I mean? I was in the exact same position as he was um, the same time. With this guy, we talk about Jordan Miller. He was a, re- a late replacement for me. And I'd only had about a few fights at that time. But Jordan had 30 professional fights. Wow. And a lot of people told me, don't take this fight. It's a bit, it's, yeah. it, that's risky. But um, you've trained all that time, you don't want to waste it. And I went into that fight, I went hungry and I managed to win it. So I'm expecting the same from this guy. Okay. I don't expect this to yeah. be easy at all. Like he's going to have the same hunger I did. So yeah. I've got to train my ass off again and just... just you seem like a very uh, humble man, you know, like if someone with your skill set or knows how to fight could be, yeah. you know, a bit of a... A meathead. Yeah, something like that's, that. a, that's a better way of putting it. <laughs> More uh, polite or way. There are a lot of guys out there like that and a lot of fighters out there that, they they want to fight because they want to be seen like that. Yeah, they are. They get exposed in the gym. The minute they come into the gym, they get exposed straight away. And that's the thing. You've got a lot of aggressive guys out there that 
they might even be on steroids. That's another whole subject we can go into. Like, right, because yeah. There's like go there. a lot of meathead guys on the yeah. rise. In this country, a lot of people don't realise there's no testing. You, yeah. you going in there and you're putting yourself on the line against in front of everybody watching against somebody that could be on all sorts of drugs. you just got to do your best to just know that you can beat them. But what I'm saying is those guys don't ever last long. Okay, so, so what if uh, a fight was presented to you, you've seen a picture of the guy and he's looking yeah. like mad meaty. Your weight, but he just looks too good to be true. I, what do you then do? Do you speak to your trainer? Like, How does that... No, nah, you can't. You, you can't just still go through with the fight. You're... Look at the thing that's going on now. Like I'm saying, my, my hero, Anderson Silva, he's been scrutinised for the same thing. They think that he was on drugs, on steroids, and he doesn't look like he's muscly. There's all sorts of different performance enhancing in drugs that yeah. don't just make you strong. Yeah. And you know what? If I come against someone like that which I have done before, some guys that I thought, this is a bit iffy, like, he looks a bit big and strong. I've got the confidence that I know that I can rely on my skills and he's got to rely on his drugs that are only going to last him the first round. If we get past that first round, yeah. a lot of muscles take a lot of oxygen out of you. You're, you're going to tire yourself yeah. out and that's when I'm going to just finish you. Nice. Wow. Well, I look forward to coming to see your next fight in Colchester, definitely. You coming? Can't, I can't wait for that. Yeah, we're going to be there. The whole team. We're going to be there. The whole team will be uh, there. Good, good, good. Now, I've heard you're a bit of a... Uh, party man um, now and again how do now you if you win the f- what, after your first win ever win like, yeah. what happened that night what, what what did you do did you go home and sleep oh, first win did you go and get a meal yeah yeah alright now I'm like nice. right first <laughs> win <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what the first win was uh, was wicked that was a good feeling my first win um, the next day my brother and my boys I, c- I can't remember exactly what was going on it might have been somebody's birthday or something but we all went yeah. down to Liverpool and we had a a party out there the next day we went to like just see what that town was like and oh nice you you there's no better feeling there's no better feeling than winning a fight so to celebrate afterwards is even better you always plan to party because yeah. imagine not drinking not eating what you want for 10 weeks 8 to 10 weeks a couple of months like without having a drink without eating some chocolate cake or fried chicken or nothing like that it's it's hard so after yeah. that you need some sort of release and you need to party but I tell you what when you lose you don't even want to do that there's nothing to celebrate so after you win, that's the best feeling. And to party after that is cool. But, like, I've lost two weeks ago now. Yeah. Forget that partying and stuff like that. Straight, Straight back into training window. and I just want to... So after your first loss then, the comparison would be what? You go home, close your curtains... After my first loss, which was... Um, go to sleep straight away, turn off your phone, <laughs> no one contact me, like... I'll tell you what happened after my first loss. I was like, um, I, um, I fought quite a few amateurs. Yeah. Won them. Fought a pro one that, fought another pro one that, so I was just winning, winning, winning. Yeah. First loss was my third pro fight, and I retired straight away. I went in the back of the change room and said, I'm done. <laughs> Finished. I don't want to fight again. This is nonsense. This is a robbery. It was a decision, and I felt like I was robbed. Okay. Then, if it, it well, decisions, yeah, you can get robbed, I suppose. It's yeah, open it's to. It, it, just put out there, that female referee doesn't ref no more. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's part of the female referee that disqualified me for my illegal elbows. <laughs> okay, so she's, she's retired, yeah? She's <laughs> retired. Good. You're not bitter, though. You're not bitter. Nah. He's actually yeah. fighting, on the, <laughs> he's fighting the same guy. Well, he's got the guy on the show that he lost against fighting oh, yeah. this yeah. Week, main event. Yeah, do you know what? That's another good thing. I like to see that everybody I've fought, win or lose, they've done well afterwards. Like, I like the quality of my opponents that I've fought has always yeah. been up there. Some people, they will only mm-hmm. ever fight Ayon sure Pescu. fights. He's in. Where's he? I swear he's ranked I think fourth he's, or something. Yeah, you know, he's been signed to UFC now. Yeah, there you go. So I, I mean, I love my food. So when you obviously when you're in training, you have, I presume you have a strict diet yeah. that you stick to. Um, when you're not in training, what's your favourite food? Ooh. What do you just? What do you crave when you're in training? You just think I really want. Do you know what? Every training, right? This is how bad it gets. Every time I do a training regime and I, I'm on a diet. I crave different things and I write them down. This is like my, <laughs> I write them down like, as soon as after this, I'm going to go to this burger place. I'm going to go to get a pizza, but I, I specific things. What I do, yeah, it's bad. Like when I'm on a diet, I'm going to get hungry. I watch the food channel. It's like my porn channel. I put on the food channel. <laughs> and I'm watching it. You know, you know, man versus food. Oh my, I wanted, the amount of times I wanted to fight that guy. I was like, let's change this up. I want to fight him. I want his job. And that's what I want to do when I retire. I want to take over his job. I want to be that man versus food. I've guy. seen you oh. do that in Nando's. In, <laughs> was it Margate? My goodness, when you couldn't move straight after oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. could not move. I get a new basically. I get a new favorite food every time. Whatever I, I, I see on Man vs Food, whatever I can see. One time, I see like this Instagram picture of a of a of a double cheese bacon burger, right? 
and the buns were made out of Krispy Kreme donuts. Wow. Oh, my days. <laughs> Sounds sickly. <laughs> so when you're in deep training, you know, that is the best thing you could ever dream of. Yeah. So I made one of those and felt sick after one bite. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah done, done, done. But yeah, yeah. you start to realise those cravings, they're, it, it, they're weird. A lot of my fights before, I've gone up and down and weight badly because of these cravings. Like, yeah. you know, like how Ricky Hatton did? Okay, yep. Yeah. Not as extreme. He's, a, he's a, like a nice drink after he yeah. finished training. But he's a damn good fighter, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like you need those release. You, you, you keep training, training and being a diet all that whole time. You've got no no drive. There's no release. So you've got to mix it up. And now I feel like my, I'm at the best stage where I can control that now. Like I can stay closer to weight all the time. And I feel like this is why I want to fight more regularly. Yeah, that's good. So yeah. when you are when you are training, what's your basic diet? I'm, I, me, I like to do a lot of juicing. I like to... Yeah. I'm not a really... A, Boil vegetables, eat vegetables, guy. I bought a juicer, I'm juicing it, I'm drinking it, it's happening, it's re- happening fast. That's it, it's yeah, into man. my system. But how do you, what do you normally eat while you're in training? What's your um, diet? A lot of proteins, obviously. It's a lot of protein. Basically, I cut out all dark meats, I eat chicken and fish, mostly fish. Why'd you cut out dark meats? Um, they just they just stay on the body longer. They're not particularly bad for you. Is it harder to digest? They're harder to digest. Okay. And like, when it comes to MMA, like, and meat and a weight, it's not exactly like what's got as much fat in it. It's what it's like. Sometimes it comes down to just how light you are. It doesn't mean how fit you are, but yeah. how light you are. Things lighter, things like fish, your body can process better. It's just full of protein. It's good for you. Like if I could eat fish every day, I would. I just can't bother to cook it. But um, yeah, yeah, man. I find different <laughs> ways. I just eat white meats, cut out the carbs pretty early in the day. I just eat what I need for training and then recovery. So it's really strict. We could be all day talking about my diet. Yeah. Like it's re- it's really strict, but um, it works. Right. So separate to the fighting. We've heard of these famous barbecues that you have. Like, talk to us about why have we not got these invites? These barbecues. Yeah, I've never been to about. a barbecue. No, well, it, yes, you have. You've been, 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 like, been to a barbecue. <laughs> Do you know what? It's mad. They started at my house. Just a little barbecue for my birthday. Moved it out of the house. Got DJ. I just got a really good set of friends, man. And like, it yeah, them just, guys are crazy. Yeah, they're a bit mad, and it, it's just blown up. Like the last barbecue, there's over 500 people there in a wow. park at a football wow. field. <laughs> DJs all play for free. It's just a fun day, man. Like, just just everybody. If you're coming though, you gotta bring a bottle, yeah. Yeah, because I've got that. Yeah, what's your, what's your and you might have to bring a and piece of chicken. chicken as well. Yeah, yeah uh, some yeah. chicken. Right, right. <laughs> I can get someone to make some chicken. Oh, yeah, man. And you've been—I'm sure you've been. I've never been. No, I've never—I've never had an invite. Do you like know what? In fact, sorry, Maria. Is like, that? I, I rang Dan. No, actually, I was ill. He did ask me to come. I was ill. I had to sign a yeah. Forget about it. Yeah. So you flopped. Yeah, flopped. Basically, you let me down. You, uh, you could say yeah, that. Your invite goes I'll bring some juice like, next time. Is it like a yearly thing? Is it a six monthly thing? Uh, once a year, birthday party. Once a year. It's happening the fourth of July this year. I'm right, gonna so jump in. Time. Sell some yeah, tickets. We've got about a month to go. Fourth you selling July. tickets? Huh? You selling tickets? Um, nah, just come. And how do people oh, hear okay. about this? Like you just randomly say this is the day or yep. do you set I, it up? Do you know what? Or? I don't even tell people where it is until the day because I don't want the wrong kind of people going. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. I'm oh, pretty people <laughs> like you. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you can yeah, handle like, yourself if the wrong people do come though, yeah, can't true, you? True, but not if 500 people go you and see, I'm drunk. You ain't seen the state of them. You've not seen the state of them. Absolute mess. So we'll be looking for it on the day. We'll be waiting. Everyone's be waiting for the day. Yeah, we've anticipated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Join it. Follow at Matt's Barbecue on Instagram, and then you'll know the day it comes out. I'll put the dress at up Matt's there Barbecue. and just come down, man. At Matt's Barbecue at Instagram. Yeah, yeah, man. Wow. Good. Here we go. We we've got to wrap this up anyway. But I got a message from your brother. I've been influenced by the MMA game from a very young age. I started fighting myself when I was 21 and Matt was my very first corner man right in there with me and he's like seven years younger than me so he's always been influenced by it but never really got into it himself until my final loss at the hands of Jimmy Manu and then Matt started training himself and um, really went from there really to get into it so we decided okay we're going to do things right we're not going to make the mistake that some of the old school gyms were doing where some people are coming off the street and thought right we just want to learn to fight start training MMA and then go compete straight in MMA I'm a big believer in you have to have a background in at least a couple of us or one decent one first before you can start doing anything so we taught him all the art singularly he started training jiu-jitsu with me he started doing his Thai boxing down at Semtex and some other gyms we took him to some Thai boxing interclubs. I took him to the Nogi Opens. We took him to a UCMA event. So a UCA event, which was a Nogi grappling competition. We really like made him compete at every little kind of interclub level before we even thought about MMA. Actually, by the time it was time for him to um, 
actually competing in MMA, he'd already learned a lot of the mistakes that a lot of the kids were making their first time in the cage. I mean, Matt's already made his striking mistakes at interclub matches for Thai boxing. He's made his mistakes on the floor in no-gi competitions. Now it's a case of tying it all together in the MMA arena. And I think London KO was actually his first show. You might know a little bit about that, Dan. And um, we got the victory, his first victory, first pro victory. And um, yeah, really, really proud of Matt. He's got a long way. As far as I'm concerned, regardless of his um, couple of latest results, he best one weight in the country by far. And that's from your brother. Uh, We've got one more from one of your training partners, Richard Griffin. He's a legend. Uh, Richard yeah. Griffin, I like Richard yeah. Griffin. Um, Matt Robinson cool is one of his training partners that will learn your style over a time when he's when he's sparring with you. It makes it really difficult for you to, um, how can I put it, get complacent. You have to always strive to get better. You always have to find new ways of fighting, otherwise he will learn your style and basically defeat you with it. Um, his work effort is great. He keeps on striving to get better. He's constantly working hard, constantly pushing, jogging, um, doing all his road work and all his exercise in all time. In fights, um, this guy could be really devastating. Um, there's no doubt he's got great potential and probably will be one of the best fighters out there sooner or later. This guy always sounds like he just woke up. Uh, man, that's nice to hear <laughs> coming from two of the oldest guys in MMA <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's cool, man. That's that's nice compliments. It is nice compliments yeah. from Richard and. I don't really talk to my brother a lot about things like that. We're just brothers, so we just beat each other yeah. up and get on with it. So it's nice to hear yeah. what he's saying. And but that, that must have been a good influence, knowing that you had an older brother, seeing him fight and stuff, it, yeah. win, lose or draw, just to see that. Because I, I always admire any fighter, just to actually go in the cage and yeah, get it definitely. on, put in the hard work. But to hear them nice words must be... Yeah, man. Like he was the, Obviously, the reason I'm fighting, and everybody's he's fought so many guys that have gone into the UFC. Yeah. And his last loss was against Jimmy Manuel, and what he said was right. I, as soon as I see him lose to that, that was like my brother. I started training, and I was like, that's it. If Ryan's getting beat up by Jimmy Manuel, I'm going to train. I'm going to beat up Jimmy Manuel. <laughs> Get out of there, Jimmy, yeah? That's, just done it, because he's massive, and he would just beat me up. <laughs> 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 but you don't want to fight him. But that, yeah, that's my inspiration, to man. That just made me train so hard. I was like, nah, yeah. I want to get in there now and start, start yeah. winning, man. That's good. And have you got a lot of uh, mutual respect for other fighters on the scenes and stuff like that? I have got mutual respect for any fighter yeah. that fights professionally and holds down a full-time job at the same time, because you don't know how hard that is to yeah, go to tough. work, yeah. come home, and then go to training every day. Yeah. It's the hardest thing ever, man. So I've got respect for anyone that, that goes through that struggle to get to the point where they can just only fight and earn enough money to be a fighter. Matt, that's great. Listen, we're going to wrap things up here. Wicked. Thank you for coming down to ah, Open Match Show on Deja Vu. Thanks to Maria. Thank you. Thanks to Dan. I'll see you all at the barbecue, yeah? Yeah, yes. full, full for July. At Matt's Barbecue. At Matt's Barbecue. At Matt's Barbecue on Instagram. Hashtag Matt's Barbecue. You'll see all the crazy pics. And we out.